A few weeks ago, I woke up to discover that having had a few too many of the old Christmas Baileys the night before, my past self had very kindly treated me to a new device, the Behringer RD6. For those of you who are not familiar with the Behringer RD6, this is an analog clone of one of Roland's original analog drum machines from the 1980s, the TR606. Now Google reliably informs me that the TR606 was not always the legendary drum machine that we know it to be today. Originally it was a bit of a commercial flop and the reasoning given for this is because by the time it came out people were kind of fed up of these bulky limited analog drum machines and they wanted accompaniments which actually sounded like a real drummer. You know wait, analog drums, actual analog drums not an analog electronic drum machine and for that reason it wasn't until a few years later when intrepid creative and probably very broke people had picked up these things from the bargain bin basement I presume in some electronics shop and used them within their limitations to become an integral part of various different kinds of electronic music. Having looked into this a wee bit, it does make you wonder what kind of devices are out nowadays that we are looking at thinking, oh that's really limited for the price, and what ones of them might become future classics. Perhaps that's not even possible anymore, but it's interesting to look back on and consider. Although I guess that's not actually the point of this video at all, so what am I talking about? Ah yes, on paper, buying one of these things in 2021 or 2022 perhaps by the time you watch this video is probably pretty stupid or at least there's no real good reason for it because it's extremely limited. Just like the original TR606 there are, an, there are I should say, a number of fairly critical limitations with the RD6. Specifically, even though this is an analogue drum machine and all the voices are analogue, they make sounds via analogue circuitry, there is no real way to modify them in the sense that you can't adjust the decay of any of the sounds, you can't adjust the pitch of any of the sounds, and these knobs up here only really let you change the volume of each element within the mix. And even then there's further limitations which aren't even worth talking about. Now when you realise that this can only basically give you a standard set of sounds, you begin to wonder, well, why don't you just use a sampler since that is the perfect kind of use case for something like this. However, there are some things about the RD6 that are particularly interesting and for the price, perhaps worth considering. For me, I didn't just buy this contrary to what I said earlier because I was pissed one night. I have been thinking about getting an RD6 for a wee while. The first feature that I really like is the fact that on the back here you'll see that there are individual outputs for most of, if not all, of the sounds. And this is something that if you watch the channel regularly you'll know that I like a lot because it means you can then take the individual sounds, you can process them separately and you can kind of adjust them in the mix later on. Or, you know, you can run them through all sorts of weird and wonderful effects. You can put your kick drum through a big dirty preamp and make it sound wild. You can, I don't you can do lots of things that you can't really do with a lot of modern drum machines where they all kind of rely on audio over USB, which I really dislike. I should say that not every sound has its own dedicated output. So the low tom and the high tom do share an output. So does the open hat and the closed hat. However, you get more flexibility than you would in other things. So that's something that I am particularly pleased or yeah, I'm glad to see it on there. Now a few other things I like about this specifically are first of all that you also have MIDI in and out on the back of this which means that you can use this device as a kind of a sound module with an external, you know, sequencer. And this isn't something you could do with the original TR606 and it makes it really useful, particularly if you can't be arsed using the sequencer, which I'm going to come on to just now. The sequencer in here is very limited. It is similar to the originals. It's got a kind of classic Roland, you know, step sequencer thing. But there is no swing on this. There is no micro timing or anything like that. 
but I kind of like it for that reason, in the sense that I'm a big believer that the workflow or the hardware or the layout of things really influences and changes the way you approach making music and can inspire different things you would never usually do. And I can often kind of get lost in the more complicated sequencers, which just prevents me from, you know, making music. Whereas with this thing, I've actually just sat on the couch and enjoyed making beats with it, which I never normally do. And I can't believe I just said making beats. I'm gonna to have to go and jump in the Clyde now. The other added bonus thing I like about the RD6 actually, which I've not really seen anybody in any other reviews mention, is that because of the various outputs on the back and also a couple of the trigger outputs specifically on the front, you can use the RD6 as a kind of dedicated trigger sequencer for other gear. Now of course you have to make sure that everything is set up in a way that the voltage and stuff matches whatever you're trying to trigger, but in Eurorack land you'd pay uh, about double the amount at least to get a trigger sequencer with this kind of functionality. So that's pretty cool and I'm definitely going to be um, experimenting with that side of things a wee bit more. Ultimately though, the big reason I got this was really just because I am a big fan of the sound of the 606. And I don't really know why that is. When I was doing some research into the 606, because I don't really have a huge vast knowledge about classic drum machines, it's something that I've only really been able to pick out and uh, pick up over the past few years, or maybe even the past year. However, as it turns out, a lot of artists that I really like and have listened to during my formative years have used the original 606 sounds on some of my favourite songs and albums, including Mr. Wazo, Massive Attack, Blur, and even Steve Albini in Big Black. And so perhaps, you know, my psyche has subconsciously been influenced. In the past, whenever I've used 606 sounds in my music, it's always been from samples, because of course, I have never had an actual 606, nor probably will I ever have one. And so, to be able to have an analogue recreation of that drum machine, which I'm kind of drawn to and feel an affinity towards is actually pretty great, especially considering it's literally under £100. So I haven't had the 606 clone for a few weeks, what do I actually make of it? Is it as limited and as crappy as I kind of feared whilst I was waiting for the delivery man to bring my drunken purchases? No, actually, it's not, and I've been very pleasantly surprised by the RD6. The first thing that I've been pleasantly surprised about was the build. Now, lots of people online have talked about how cheap and kind of plasticky and lightweight it feels, and yes, it feels plasticky and lightweight because it's made of plastic, and the original thing wasn't a premium drum machine at the time either. However, I don't really care about that. What I care about is how it feels to use, and to be honest, the kind of plastic they've used and the kind of frosted nature of the transparent one, at least, doesn't feel all that crap to me. It just doesn't have that cheap feeling. It definitely doesn't feel like an expensive device, and it doesn't even feel actually like, um, you know, the quality of something else from Behringer, like the Pro One, which is all metal, or the Crave, which is in a similar kind of form factor, because that is also all metal. It, but it doesn't have that kind of overwhelmingly crappy plastic feel. The knobs are fine, the buttons are all clicky and fine, I haven't had any issues with the build. And to be honest, something about the kind of big, colourful, plastic nature of it just makes it really fun to use. I guess on that point specifically, I should say that I got the green one because in my head, the number six is this very particular lime green colour. Now that might sound weird, but I do associate different numbers and things with different colours. And so to be able to get the RD6 specifically in this colour, which matched the one in my mind, which might sound actually insane as I'm saying it out loud, but it was a nice touch. And so it just makes it that wee bit more, you know, um, personally endearing. Now, probably the more important thing about this, which I was actually really blown away by, was just how good it sounds.
And as I've said, I've not had an original 606. I've no idea how that compares to an actual analogue hardware Roland TR606. However, I was really surprised just at how punchy the sounds are when I just plugged my headphones in. The samples that I've got are from good, reliable sources and I like how they sound. However, none of them really compare to what this sounds like and I don't really know why that is. Perhaps it's just a psychosomatic thing about having a bit of hardware in your hands that makes it, you know, feel better in your ears, you know, mentally or something, I don't know. Maybe it's because it's analog going straight out through the headphones, I don't know. Whatever it is, it sounds really good and when you combine the kind of snare and the kick together on this, it, it just it's got some heft to it. And that was one thing actually, that the kick drum on the 606, I feel like in samples can feel a bit underwhelming because it's a lot of kind of body, but not, it doesn't have like a pop to it. But this sounds way better than any of the 606 kick samples I've got. So I'm actually really pleasantly surprised and pleased with how it sounds. Now, there are some downsides to talk about, and you may have noticed on mine that at the top here I have a few added switches, and the reason for that is because there is one glaringly weird problem with the RD6, which is the clap sound. Now, the original 606, I believe, didn't have a clap sound, but Behringer have added an additional clap sound onto here, which came from the BR110. I don't actually know. I guess that's the DR110, the boss thing. I should have looked that up before now. But this switch here allows you to go between the cymbal and the clap. And this means that you can program both a clap and a cymbal, but they share the same volume knob. And the problem with this is that the volume of the cymbal is very much louder than the clap. In fact, the clap is way quieter than any of the other elements in this thing, which is really strange and such a bizarre oversight on their part. And I can hear people now you know, comment about Behringer, which I'm going to completely ignore. However, there are a few different modifications you can make to your RD6 if you're handy with a soldering iron to kind of correct a couple of things or make them a wee bit different. And so one of the most common mods that people are doing is to modify the clap with a specific resistor value, which gives you a much louder clap sound and really balances things out a lot. Now, the good thing about the RD6 for modifying is that because it's so big and the case is so much space in there, you can really kind of install it in a variety of different ways. And I've put in different switches here so that I can go back to the original sounds. I've also done some other mods that I'll do a separate video on. However, it's worth noting that in the sound demos you can hear, there is one modification on which I can't turn off, which is a modification of the hi-hat sound. And that is our basic mod, which basically just gives it a wee bit more body, or it's less treble heavy, essentially. However, because I destroyed some um, of the SMD components, I can't turn off. But for the rest of the examples, it's it's you're hearing the stock RD6 because I, I've turned all the mods off for these purposes. I bring this up really not just to talk about the mods, but also because when I show you the back here, you'll notice that the holes are kind of, you know, not exactly lining up with the jacks. And that is not because of Behringer, as I'm sure some people will be quick to say, but more because I tried to squeeze these switches in a place that they really shouldn't have gone. Overall, even with its limitations, I really like the RD6 and I'm pretty glad that my drunken past self had the foresight to know that I actually really wanted one of these because not only do the 606 sounds from this sound better than the samples that I've got from the actual 606, but also I just enjoy playing with it and the build quality is not as bad as people would have you believe. I can tell you this with assurance because in my process of modifying this, I have literally taken it apart and put it back together, I mean, more times than I want to admit. And all these knobs and switches and everything have been ripped off in a rage various times and they all work perfectly fine. There's kind of a sturdiness there that you might not expect. So if you're curious about classic drum machines, if you like the 606, if you just want to have a nice wee sound module or play about with classic drum patterns, I don't know, the RD6 is worth a look. 
and I'm glad I got one. For now, thank you for watching and hopefully this will be the drum machine I need to propel me to the great heights of my musical hero, Mr. Wazo. If not, then um, you can all just subscribe to my Patreon and help me buy things to chase my lofty but unattainable dreams.